is um, it's unions together today. It's a collective name together today. It's association together today for uh, uh, numerous of, of, um, of difficulties that we have in, in St. Martin. The first one is, is the collectivity workers. We have about 25 workers. They want to lay off. Workers have been working from since 2014. And we are saying no to that because just after the hurricane that we have, it's so hard for these mothers and fathers to find a job. Mm -hmm. We have demonstrated that on the budget that there's, uh, there's enough money to hire these people. And there the president is, is of, of um, Princeside, Daniel Gibbs, is telling us um, that it's a political decision. So therefore now the, it's with the, the population because the population is the one that elect him to be a politician. Mm -hmm. So therefore now the, work, the, the population is standing today in order to say, since it's a political decision, well, we the population is telling you that these workers are in their right and we are asking you to give them back their job so they could continue supporting their family. We also have our Bethany home, our Bethany home with our elders. Our elders, some of them have been shipped off to Guadeloupe and we want them to come back. But the building is such an, an uh, uh, devastated um, situation from after Hurricane Irma and we are realizing that the government is not doing nothing in order to advance with that project, in order to fix back the Bethany home so those that is gone could come back and also we are asking for the protection of those workers at Bethany home because by taking away on 40 beds, taking away 20, they will have a problem actually after also. And it also have our education, our education field that is very hampered from this hurricane and we are asking um, the education department because there are a lot of schools that is not fit back in St. Martin. And we are asking to get that regulated also. We also have the em uh, so we have a point for the employment, the employment in St. Martin, whereas we want employment to be um, corresponding to our, the demands of um, our people, of our, our needs in St. Martin. So we want our people from St. Martin in order to get those jobs. We also have the different social problems, the, the, for example, the front lines in them in French Quarter and also in Marigold and Rencourt, that the um, St. Quantai Geometry, that they don't want the people and then we bail back. We also on that also and we say no to the expropriation after the hurricane. And nevertheless, we have also the post office, our post office in French Quarter that not, have not been um, reopened. And that is calling on the elder people to come down and, and to Marigold and, and to bring cars to the post office. And we want that post office to be op open back. Yes. So the money can be continued circulating in French Quarter. So here today we are at the roundabout of Marigold Agreement and we are waiting on an answer from the higher state in order for them to send us an email so we can open up negotiations. But how effective has the action been though? How many persons are involved? Do I take it that there is a complete shutdown of Marigo? Yes, there is a, there's a complete shutdown of Marigo right now. Right now we are standing by the roundabout. It's over about, let's just say roughly 500 people standing in, in Marigo right now. And we are awaiting on an answer from the higher state so we could open up negotiation like I said before. Because that's the importance of this strike. It was not for all of the people that is concerned to sit down at a table so we could start to open up negotiation and we could come to an agreement on each point. Now, if an agreement is not arrived at Nicole, what happens next? Uh, what will be your next course of action? Well, actually, we have a TRV, which is a legal document that's, that's sent in. And it's um, unlimited. Our strike is unlimited. So we are stand, we will stand on our position until we get um, total satisfaction to each and every point. And how many unions are involved in this action? Actually, we have a platform with um, four unions that is signed that have the grievances on the PRV de Grève, the legal document that we sent in. Mm -hmm. So we have um, four, but we have more association and more unions also that is join us. So we, we, are, we are a good bit, even though they are not mentioned on our PRV, our legal document that um, we send out to the higher state. There's a lot of unions, a lot of people, and it's a different collective, different associations. So I have to say I am proud. I'm proud of us St. Martin today because we have demonstrated our power and we have really demonstrated that um, something is wrong in our country. 
Your action is having far-reaching consequences for St. Martin. In fact, this is happening at a time that we have tourist cruise ships in port. The roads are blocked. Um, uh, was that also taken into consideration as well? Of course, Anna, that is taken into consideration. But we, the population is, is the one that's standing and we are suffering. And if we are not happy, we cannot solve the people. You know, we cannot serve the people. If we, the employees, for example, of the collectivity is not happy, we cannot serve the people in the right way. If the teachers and them are not comfortable, the kids cannot learn in a proper way. So, of course, we are taking in consideration the tourists because that is one of our, our main um, income. But if we are not happy, if we are not satisfied in our country, well, they would not be satisfied either. The Windward Islands Chamber of Labor Unions, we are in solidarity with our brothers on the French side because the movement of having um, meetings, etc., is also to be able to unify the unions, etc. The One of the things, though, that you might be quite honest, if they are having a general strike, it is not logical, though, that right away, on the Dutch side, you can proclaim a general strike. When, to start with, um, we have a little difference in laws, actually, and that's why you would see as civil servants, we cannot proclaim a strike. We can have our type of actions as, let's say, sit-ins or um, a meeting on the working hours, etc. But to have a general strike, like how it was in on the French side, there is a difference within the laws that we have to look at. For example, I would see that they can um, create barricades. I don't know whether it's legal, yes or not, but barricades are being placed on the roads, etc. On the Dutch side, we cannot um, functionable put those type of barricades in place. Last action we remember that wasn't actually from the union but was the heavy equipment owners to um to actually bring forth their point it was the blockade of the government building in under the under that side but that was blocked with heavy equipment the way it's done with rocks and and garbage and pallets etc on the french side it we have in our public ordinance the laws of the public of the land we have certain restrictions if you do something like that if you hinder certain things like that you would be able to you know be prosecuted and held responsible i really don't know how how it is on the french side when it comes to that public law because if you look at guadeloupe france they all keep the same type of action the fact of the matter is that um as workers you have your rights and you have the rights to be able to demonstrate things that are not fitting. However you choose to give your demonstration, the, the message from me would be, I am looking at what are the issues and we are in solidarity with the workers of the French side in accomplishing their um, the goals and also in bringing forward the issues that are um, how it would negatively impact and affect their workers and trying to be able to get now the best package for their workers. So therefore, the general strike that has been proclaimed on the French side, although you don't actively see a strike on the Dutch side, the sentiments as president of the Windward Island Chamber of Labor Unions is we would like to for them to know that from our heart. We are in solidarity with their action. It's been said that behind every door 
possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. certain each certain elements of the reform of the new pension system which parliament is before parliament right now when we realized that our members had um a number of issues that were not taken into consideration at the moment when we were in the work group and were not part of our foresight either while we were in the work group, we therefore, as joint unions, invited the members of parliament to a meeting on April, Tuesday, April the 2nd, at the Wixu's office. Basically, from the, the members of parliament that came to the meeting, and of course, we also got apologies of who could not attend, we got the assurance based on their questions and their um, concerns also that this law would have to be researched a little more a number of things would have to be discussed a little further and it would have to go back to the drawing board but on Wednesday April the 10th we again receive an invitation from Parliament to be there at five and again for the number of members of Parliament that were at this meeting we again as unions provided the concerns of our members who at the end of the pension age they are the ones that are the recipients of pension now in the whole process of the um, of this reform we notice that of course the the government is aimed as to making it also um, how you would say more sustainable for themselves it is not only the sustainability of the funds but there are certain reductions that would also benefit the government the pension is built up basically of the workers contribution and their employers contribution while the employers contribution that was tw that is 25 percent at the moment it is um being lowered the premium the contribution for the worker is not being lowered and there basically you had the mps saying and having the question so the savings that is going to be incurred, let's say the percentage in savings, why is it not being split 
between the government and the workers alike? Well, all of these are questions that have to go back. One of the concerns, though, from our members, and that's why I want to bring it clearly to the foreground, is our members are now faced with the fact that they would be asked to work in principle three to five years longer because the pension age moved in 2016 from age 60 to 62. In that period, those that were falling, there was a transitional um, arrangement for those that at any time they could stop um, going to 62, they could stop with a six months notice. But when it is now going from 60 to 65, that transition is not, or 62 to 65, better say, that transition is not provided. On the contrary, the discrimination that came in there, and our members are totally against that, is that if they choose to stop anywhere before reaching 65, they would get a 6% deduction on their pension. Now, the 6% deduction doesn't sound very much, but it for our members, it is difficult, especially firemen, ambulance personnel, that during their active work years, they build up this pension. But when they are going up in age, a lot of aches and pains and different um, related problems from the jobs um, that they have been doing, let's say, going into these um, areas that, are little or no accessible then they have to lift patients from certain areas that the ambulance cannot reach and you know after that having back and 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 uh, um, hip problems for example even knees and leg problems these are the things that have triggered our members to say but why should we be penalized if because of our condition we decide to stop a little earlier why should we be conditioned the flexibility in the pension fund should um be there that we can have that type of flexibility without being penalized How you doing? You busy? I hear just paying some bills, taking care of business. You know what it is? <laughs> I know you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll get online with Viv now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Wib today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices.
the Wynwood Islands Bank, now your online banking partner in progress. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina, and I play football with the Walichi Roma soccer team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy, and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and we help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in? of Mr. Weaver to take an in-depth look into the uh, planetary faci uh, facilities. Um, it's actually good to see that, that there's progress and that, 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 that a lot of work has been done to improve those facilities. For instance, the Lali Center, the construction is almost finished and it's supposed to be up and running this summer, and that's actually good also for the island uh, and for uh, youth cr criminal justice. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot to be done, especially at Point Blanche, where we actually been taking a look. A lot of work been done, but also a lot of work that still needs to be done, both on the construction, but also on the technical aspects. And of course, uh, if you look at recruiting the right personnel actually to safeguard the facilities and to run the day programs. Um, but we have good and intensive talks about uh, what will be done later on this year. Um, we have offered our uh, assistance, um, for instance, in getting some temporary uh, additional capacity or at least uh, 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 researching or, or finding ways for instance to bring in and ship in some containers that can actually work as, uh, as prison, uh, prison cells. Um, so it's been a fruitful visit. Uh, uh, as I said, still a lot of work to be done, um, but I uh, have my confidence in uh, uh, the Minister of Justice that uh, uh, we'll be able to do a lot of work in the coming months. Of course, extend my hospitality to Minister Decker for being here as well. Um, when I visited the Netherlands last year, the first, one of the first questions I asked him is, have you been to St. Martin? And, his answer was no at that moment. He's been here before, but not in the capacity as a minister. So I said, well, definitely please come back and see what we're doing. Because many times when you read reports where there are progress committee reports, there are always a few months behind and so many things happened since then. So I always felt it was important that he see firsthand what is actually happening and the progress that we are making in St. Martin, not just based on the improvement plan, but additional progress that we're making. And I believe that Having seen it firsthand, the impression that is, was created in the past is completely different now. Uh, the Simpson Bay holding area was also shown. We were pleased with that. Miss Lally Center as well. I believe there we see the progress and hopefully by June those doors will be on and open. 
And uh, then we also visited the Phillipsburg holding area. There we saw the improvements that were done there as well. And it's been night and day compared to a month ago. Uh, again, that's all progress that's being made. A lot of the work uh, at Point Manch Prison was also shown and we initially started on the top so that they could see all the work that was done on the roof because if you're going to repair on the inside, if your roof is leaking, it won't work. So definitely seeing that work that was done, the walls that have been put up, the overclimb of leaking at the high tension wires, the cameras, all the progress that have been made there and that will continue to be made. Uh, we're very happy that they're also going to be part of it. And the request for the additional container cells um, has been accepted. The details and logistics have to be worked out, but the fact that they have even considered it is also a great step in increasing our capacity at the prison. Um, again, we, I also told them about the work that we're going to be doing with NEPA and MIC, and that the inmates will be constructing the chapel, the instruction area, as well as the storage area and the generator room. So the fact that they are also going to be involved in that is a great um, experience for all. Now, it's also important that they understand and that we all understand the, pro the, the process it takes to get projects done on the island after AMO. Uh, the fact that ICE has to come in, they have to do their, their whole plan, their drawings, the tendering, and that's done independently to avoid any kind of uh, corruption or perception of corruption, so we also make sure that that's not done in any way that people can look at it differently. But all in all, I am extremely excited about today and I am happy with the results for all the productive meetings we've had and I look forward to continue working with Minister Deckard. Um, I believe he's a man of his word and we will continue working together.